Dear friends, welcome to this question-answer series presented by Dr. Johnson C. Philip. Dr. Philip has spent his whole life answering young and old on an unbelievably wide range of subjects. His ultimate aim is to help you to find answers to your questions and even doubts. In turn this will help you in multiple ways. Dr. Philip keeps posting question answers regularly. Many of these can be very helpful to you. Do not miss any of them. Please subscribe to our channel and you will get notice of each and every video as it is posted. It is easy to subscribe. Below this video you will see a subscribe icon. Please click it. Please also click to bell icon there to confirm your subscription. That is all. You will never miss any of these life transforming videos. God bless you. Today, when brother Thomas Philippos was leading us in prayer, he mentioned many things and one of them was that God the Holy Spirit may guide these classes in such a way that each one of us might be able to get exactly what we need. And as we begin the class, I thank him for that prayer and I also pray to God, my beloved ones, that these classes may be able to provide you exactly what you all need. In classes ke dwara, har vyakti ko jis cheech ki jarurat hai, wo unko mil sake prabhu. Aisa agwai mein prarthna karte samay bhai Thomas ne jo prarthna ki, prabhu se meri binti hai ki he prabhu, meri bhi yehi binti hai ki har vyakti ko nishchit roop se wah mil sake jo usko chahiye. As I was explaining in my last classes, some of the doctrines are so fundamental that without them we cannot go further. And all these doctrines stand upon another foundation and that foundation is the doctrine of Bible. When we use the word doctrine, many people think, oh, doctrine, it's a lot of theory. No, that is the wrong word of the, the wrong usage of the word doctrine. Doctrine actually means a collection of biblical truths. And doctrine of Bible means collection of all what the scripture says about itself. हम यहाँ पर परमेश्वर के वचन के बारे में परमेश्वर का वचन क्या कहता है इसका अध्ययन करने के लिए एकत्रित हुए हैं क्योंकि बाकी सब कुछ इस नीव के ऊपर आधारित है इन माई लास्ट क्लास आई रिमाइंडेड यू दैट वी स्टैंड अपॉन फोर फाउंडेशन लेट मी गिव यू ए रिव्यू एंड लेट एस गो Uh, let us proceed from there. I told you these four statements, they became prominent at the time of Protestant Reformation and from there onwards, every Bible believing church has stood on these foundations and these foundations are number one, sola scriptura, Bible alone. Number two, sola fide, faith alone. Number three, sola gratia, grace alone. Number four, sola scriptus, Christ alone. Bible alone, sola scripture or Bible alone means Bible alone is the Holy Spirit inspired revelation in this world. And Bible alone is the final authority in all matters of faith and conduct. That is the meaning of Bible alone. Sola fide or faith alone means we are justified by faith alone. Sola gratia means we obtain salvation only through grace. And solus Christus means Christ alone is the Savior. Uh, Bible, sirf Bible ka matlab hai ki 66 pustake ye jo hai sirf yehi parmeshwar ka vachan hai aur hamare vishwas aur hamare jeevan ke maamle mein अंतिम अथॉरिटी है मनुष्य 
कहीं नहीं लगता मनुष्य की अथॉरिटी कहीं नहीं लगती है सिर्फ विश्वास का मतलब है सिर्फ विश्वास के द्वारा हम धार्मिकता पाते हैं सिर्फ कृपा का मतलब है सिर्फ परमेश्वर की कृपा के द्वारा उद्धार पाते हैं और सिर्फ मसीह का मतलब है सिर्फ मसीह ही उद्धार करता है एंड द वॉट द बाइबल टीचर्स अबाउट बाइबल इट डिपेंड्स अपॉन हंड्रेड अपॉन हंड्रेड ऑफ वर्सेस कलेक्टेड फ्रॉम ऑल ओवर द बाइबल बट देर आर टू पैसेजेस विच आर की The first passage, Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. Second Timothy three sixteen and seventeen. All Scripture is breathed out or inspired by God, and it is profitable for doctrine. It is profitable for doctrine or teaching, reproof, correction, and for training in righteousness, that the man of God may be mature. competent equipped for every good work and the second key we find in first peter i'm sorry second peter chapter 1 verse 20 and 21 second peter chapter 1 verses 20 and 21 knowing this first of all that no prophecy of scripture comes from someone's own interpretation for no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man but men spoke from god as they were carried along by the holy spirit jo pehle do pad humne padhe ve is baat ko yaad dilate hain ki sampurn pavitra shastra पवित्र आत्मा की प्रेरणा से लिखा गया है और दूसरे दो पद जो मैंने पढ़े वो इस बात को याद दिलाते हैं कि पवित्र शास्त्र में कोई भी बात मनुष्य की प्रेरणा से नहीं लिखा गया है भाई जॉनसन मैं जो पदों को बोल रहा हूं भाई जॉनसन उसको डालते जा रहे हैं कमेंट बॉक्स में भाई जॉनसन के प्रति मेरा आभार और सभी लोग वहां पर देख लें बाई चांस यदि आपसे मिस हो गया देन देर इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्स और देर आर टू वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट वर्सेस दैट वी शुड ऑल नो वेन वी स्टडी अबाउट वॉट द बाइबल टीचर्स अबाउट द बाइबल एंड दीज वर्सेस आर सैम 147, 19 एंड 20. सैम हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी एंड ट्वेंटी he declares his word to jacob that means jacob here means israel his commandments and rules to israel he has not dealt in this manner with any other nation they do not know his rules this is a very clear statement in the bible that there is no holy spirit inspired revelation outside the bible um there are many among the brethren who have been teaching that there is holy spirit inspired revelation outside the bible they claim that the hindu scriptures contain holy spirit inspired revelation they claim that muslim scriptures contain holy spirit inspired revelation they also claim that the persian scripture avesta contains holy spirit inspired revelation in fact one of the brethren writers has written that the holy spirit it is the same holy spirit who has given revelation in the bible who has also given revelation in all the religions of the world please remember that is absolute perversion absolute perversion absolute heresy but there are people among us who would like to establish a religion a christian religion which is a mixture of christianity hinduism islam buddhism jainism and all that 
and the beginning was made in kerala a beginning was made in kerala some 40 years approximately 40 years ago when they started an organization known as kristava vedanta vedi vedanta means the peak of hindu philosophy kristava vedanta that means the christian faith they tried to mix with the peak of hindu philosophy and a number of prominent brethren people were involved to start kristava vedanta vedi and some of them have very strongly endorsed the idea that the rishi munis of india who wrote the hindu scriptures were carried by the holy spirit that means they were inspired by the holy spirit please remember that the hindu scriptures were all produced at the time of the old testament and at that about that time the scripture is very clear that god declares his word to jacob to israel not to other nations they have not understood it uh masihi jagat mein khas kar brethren jagat mein is tarah ke kuch log the jinhone sare dharmon ko ek sath jod kar ek naye dharm ki sthapna ki koshish ki aur un logon ka daava tha ki gair masihi jo dharm granth hai un sab mein bhi pavitra atma ki aguai se likhi gayi baatein hain भजन 147, 19 और 20 स्पष्टतया बताता है आ, पहले ये, ये बात मैं याद दिला दूं कि दुनिया भर के सारे जो धर्म ग्रंथ है ये पुराने नियम के काल में लिखे गए थे पुराने नियम के काल के बाद सिर्फ कुरान लिखा गया था पुराने नियम के काल के बारे में भजन 147, 19 और 20 स्पष्ट करते हैं कि परमेश्वर ने जो भी पवित्र आत्मा की अगुवाई से जो भी संदेश दिया है वो सिर्फ यहूदियों को दिया है यहूदी जगत के बाहर नहीं दिया है और वे लोग इसको नहीं समझ सकते हैं इस कारण सभी धर्मों को जोड़कर एक नवीन धर्म बनाने की ये जो कोशिश है ये प्रभु के वचन में जिस एंटी क्राइस्ट के बारे में बताया गया है जो आने वाले दिनों में आकर अपने आप को परमेश्वर के तुल्य बनाने की कोशिश करेगा उसका धर्म है जिसमें सब धर्म एक समान जुड़ जाएंगे या एक समान जुड़े होंगे देर इज अ वर्स इन द बाइबल विच वेरी क्लियरली शोस दैट पीपल आउटसाइड द पीपल outside uh, the jewish fold did not even understand god when he get, sent a message exodus chapter 5 verse 2 makes it very clear where pharaoh says who is the lord who is the lord that i should obey his voice i do not know the lord i will not allow israel to go so please remember the scripture says there is no revelation there is no holy spirit inspired revelation outside the bible and my dear brothers and sisters before we go further it should be very very clear to all of you that there is no holy spirit inspired revelation outside the bible and if anyone tries to claim that there is holy spirit inspired revelation outside the bible he or she is going away from the christian faith with that we will now proceed to uh, other things in bibliology first of all what does the bible say about itself it is good to know about that kerala is an agricultural land and because of that they have four or five different words about the state of a fruit 
see fruits are everywhere go uh, if you if you take a car and go into any rural area you will see fruits everywhere you will see papaya you will see mango you will see a uh, lot lot many more trees at times it looks like a christmas tree some trees give red fruit and they are loaded with red fruits and it looks like a lit christmas tree so a state where you can see fruits everywhere the language of, of the state has multiple words connected to various states of a fruit now i come from hindi region in hindi region we have only two words kacha hai pakka hai phal kacha hai phal pakka hai when a malayali talks about a fruit he will say pottana pacheyana velanyadana moothadana he would use at least four different words to talk about four different states of a fruit it cannot be translated into hindi in the same way the number of words used about a, any given thing shows the importance of that thing so in a state which is dominated by fruits i forgot in kerala in any where that you go you will see banana trees and that also half a dozen minimum half a dozen variety of bananas so this state is dominated by fruits and therefore the language of this state has multiple words in the same way the scripture speaks much about itself the scripture prominently speaks about itself and therefore the scripture uses multiple words about itself ऐसा देखा जाता है कि किसी चीज को जितना ज्यादा महत्व दिया जाता है उस चीज के बारे में उतने ही अलग अलग शब्द होते हैं प्रभु का वचन अपने आप के बारे में कितने महत्व के साथ कहता है ये यदि जानना हो तो प्रभु का वचन प्रभु के वचन के बारे में क्या कहता है ये जरा देखना जरूरी है there is one more thing i want to tell you we all know about eskimos they live in a land which is always covered with ice we may have two or three words about ice but it is said that they have almost 100 to 150 words for various forms of ice that is again a very important indication that what is important you do have multiple words about it since the scripture plays a vital role in the lives of god's children the scripture uses numerous words about itself in the scripture and we need to look at those words the first word is biblia biblia means books and this word is used in many 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 places so many places that if i mention those verses it will be difficult for you to note down all of them so in the comment box i have posted them i mean even brother johnson would not be able to keep up with so many verses when i mention them together these verses are mark 12 12 10 1528 luke 421 john 222 and so on up to first peter 120 the word is biblia in greek and uh, the word means books why the plain word books is used for the bible there is a reason bible is the book of the books 
in bible there is a book that is known as song of songs because that is considered the greatest song in the bible in the same way uh, right from ancient times people of god have addressed bible as book of the books in fact i remember my childhood uh once i was staying with my grandpa nana and he said son bring the book and i asked which book a lot of books in the house and he again said the book and i could not understand and finally he had to say oh my child i'm sp speaking about the bible then only i understood in kerala three generations ago a lot of people instead of saying the word bible they would just use the word book the book for them this was the book of books they got it from the scripture in the scripture one of the words used most prominently for the bible is books or biblia पवित्र बाइबल में बाइबल के बारे में जो विविध शब्द यूज किए गए हैं उसमें से एक शब्द है बिब्लिया जिसका मतलब है पुस्तक उसको हमारी भाषा में बोला जाए तो पुस्तकों का पुस्तक मैं अपने नाना जी के बारे में बता रहा था जब मैं दस साल का था उनके साथ रहने के लिए गया तो एक शाम को उन्होंने कहा बेटा वो पुस्तक उठा ला तो मैं हैरान हो गया घर में कई पुस्तकें थी अब उसमें से कौन सी पुस्तक मैंने पूछा नाना जी कौन सी पुस्तक तो बोले बेटा पुस्तक मैं फिर नहीं समझा तब उनको कहना पड़ा कि बाइबल उठा के लाओ आ, केरल में ब्रदर इन मूवमेंट 130 साल के करीब पुराना है और यहाँ पहली और दूसरी पीढ़ी के लोग बाइबल के लिए सामान्यतया सिर्फ पुस्तक शब्द का उपयोग करते थे क्योंकि उनके जीवन में उन्होंने परमेश्वर का की जो रोशनी पाई थी इसके कारण प्रभु का वचन पुस्तकों का पुस्तक था another word that we find in the bible is uh, the greek word graphe i am sure that many of you have heard the word graphite graphite is used in pencils for writing the word graphite actually comes from graphe because they found that graphite can be used for writing so from graphe they use the word graphite okay so the word graphe actually means writings and in english bible it is translated either as scripture or as scriptures malayalam tiruvelthu vishuddha vedam hindi pavitra shastra तेरे बचपन से पवित्र शास्त्र तेरा जाना हुआ है दैट इज ए यूसेज विच हैज टू कम बैक टू आवर लैंग्वेज ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स द वर्ड स्क्रिप्चर एंड स्क्रिप्चर्स हैव टू कम बैक टू आवर लैंग्वेज सम हाउ वी हैव फॉरगॉटन टू यूज दिस वर्ड in our preaching preachers often say paul says like this peter says like this and such and such person says like this we have to come back to the usage of the scripture says this when you say paul is saying this or peter is saying this you and i are creating a false impression in the minds of our children that these are human words okay so the second word used in the scripture is scripture or scriptures i have posted the verses in the comment box there are so many that i thought i'll uh, brother johnson will find it difficult to keep up with the full list these are the only two things which i am going to post the rest i am leaving the burden to brother johnson in the scripture 
we also find another word for scripture and that is a widely known word logos in the beginning was the word the word was with god and the word was god in the beginning was logos the logos was with god and logos was god that word logos is used for lord jesus christ and also for the bible the question is why use for lord jesus i we will come to that we see this in passages like mark 7:13 i i'll go slow brother johnson to give you a chance john 10:35 romans 10:70 i will repeat mark 7:13 john 10:35 romans 10:17 lot of other passages are there john 11 where logos is used now you may ask if logos is used for bible why is it used for lord jesus good question related with the doctrine of the bible hum jante hain teesra shabd jo bible ke liye bible mein hi use kiya gaya hai wo hai logos हम जानते हैं यूहन्ना एक में आदि में वचन था वचन परमेश्वर के साथ था वचन परमेश्वर था वहां पर जो शब्द यूज किया गया है वो है लोगोस लोगोस पवित्र बाइबल के लिए और प्रभु यीशु के लिए यूज किया गया है प्रभु यीशु के लिए इसलिए यूज किया गया है कि प्रभु यीशु के द्वारा परमेश्वर की परमेश्वर का वचन हमारे ऊपर प्रकाशित हुआ परमेश्वर का वचन हमको मिला इसलिए प्रभु यीशु को भी लोगोस कहा जाता है लेकिन पवित्र बाइबल को भी बाइबल में लोगोस कहा जाता है मत्ती आ, मैंने जो बोला मरकुस आई एम सॉरी मरकुस सात का तेरह यूहना दस का पैंतीस रोमियो दस का सत्रह इसके अलावा और भी बहुत सारे यूसेजेस हैं इसके अलावा भी एक शब्द यूज किया जाता है लेकिन बहुत ज्यादा यूज करने के बाद हम उसका महत्व नहीं समझ पाते देर इज अनदर वर्ड और अनदर फ्रेज विच इज यूज रिपीटेडली इन द बाइबल एंड सिंस इट वी यूज इट इन आवर एवरी डे वी हैव फॉरगॉटन द सिग्निफिकेंस एंड दैट इज दोल्ड टेस्टमेंट एंड द न्यू टेस्टमेंट वाई थ्री फोर्थ ऑफ द बाइबल इज नोन एस द ओल्ड टेस्टमेंट एंड वाई वन fourth is known as new testament we need to understand the word testament testament means covenant god made many covenants with mankind the last covenant is known as the new covenant all the others are known as the old covenant all the others were mentioned in the old testament that's why it is known as old testament or old covenant whereas the new covenant is mentioned in 27 books that's why new testament is known as new testament or new covenant an interesting verse about it is found in first corinthians 11:25 this cup is the new testament in my blood which is shed for you this cup is the new covenant in my blood why the cup is known as covenant because that cup represents the sacrificial death of christ and the topic of the entire new testament is sacrificial death of christ and the new life that we get through the sacrificial death of christ that is why lord jesus use that expression new covenant in my blood but the word covenant is used repeatedly for the bible some usages are first corinthians 
second corinthians 3 verses 6 and 14 and also hebrews 9:15 i hope i am not going too fast i'll repeat the word covenant is used for the covenant which was made in blood and it is used also for the scripture some of the references are first corinthians 11:25 2 corinthians 3 6 and 14 hebrews 9:15 so since details about lord jesus christ are found as shadow in the old testament it is known as old covenant and since multiple covenants were also involved but finally god made a new covenant with mankind and in that new covenant there is no jew no gentile everyone is part of the same family the entire details of this new covenant is found in new testament that is why new testament is called new testament purana niyam naya niyam hindi mein sahi anuvad nahi hua hai marathi bhasha mein wo log usko purana karar aur nawa karar bolte hain covenant परमेश्वर ने मनुष्य के साथ जो वाचा बांधी है सारी पुरानी वाचाएं पुराने नियम में हैं और एकमात्र नई वाचा नए नियम में इसलिए पुराने नियम को पुराने नियम और नए नियम को नया नियम कहा जाता है नॉट ओनली डायरेक्ट यूसेज द स्क्रिप्चर इज ऑल्सो कंपेर्ड विद अ लॉट ऑफ थिंग्स comparison always shows nature of something for example we say uh, our principal came to the class and roared like a lion the way he shouted is compared with the roaring of a lion to show the fantastic volume or impact of his roaring the scripture uses a number of comparisons about itself and studying those comparisons is very useful to understand the nature of the scripture one of them is the first one that i want to mention to you is jeremiah 2329 Jeremiah 2329 it says is not my word like a fire declares the lord kai bar vyaktiyon ki tulna vastuon se ya anni cheezon se ki jati hai jaise ki principal class mein aaya aur dahaade प्रभु के वचन में प्रभु के वचन की भी तुलना कई चीजों से की गई है यरमया तेईस के उन्तीस में मेरा वचन अग्नि के समान नहीं है क्या प्रभु कहते हैं तो प्रभु के वचन की तुलना अग्नि से की गई है टेल मी माई डियर ब्रदर्स एंड सिस्टर्स वॉट इज दैट सिंगल थिंग इन दिस वर्ल्ड विच कंस्यूम्स almost everything that falls into it i did not say everything almost everything fire fire can consume practically everything so much so that if a fire is strong enough if you send a spray water to the fire the fire will convert it into steam and therefore fire is something known to mankind which can practically consume everything the scripture compares 
itself with fire because the word of god is alive and powerful it consumes people it can consume people who are opposed to the word of god how exactly does that work that we will study in some other subject but please remember nobody can stand and oppose the word of god without getting burned history is our witness that anyone and everyone who ever stood and opposed the word of god got consumed as though he was consumed by fire so the first word used about the word of god is first comparison is with fire second comparison is with hammer same verse jeremiah 23 29 and is not my word like a fire and like a hammer that breaks rocks in pieces now hammer breaking rocks into pieces is known to all of us indians we know that of all the rocks which are used in everyday life or even in uh, construction of all the rocks the hardest one is granite granite is used in our kitchen but granite is also used for making roads and almost everywhere in india where construction is going on you can see a man or men sitting under a shade picking large pieces of granite and breaking them into small pieces the hammer when used in a proper manner is so powerful that it can break even the hardest rock known to man in common life i live in a state where granite is used for multiple purposes kerala and tamil nadu are states where granite is used for lot of everyday purposes and in many places you can see people sitting with granite and using hammer and chisel giving various shapes to them and in every every one of these places while there are many tools the most prominent one is hammer so is not my word like fire and like a hammer that breaks rocks in pieces the word of god is so powerful that is it is compared with two very powerful things known to man one is fire which consumes everything one is hammer which breaks everything yermaya 23 ke 29 mein dusra shabd jo hai wo hai hathoda to pehla shabd hai kya mera vachan agni ke saman nahi aur kya mera vachan hathode ke saman nahi jo patthar ko tukdon mein tod deta hai main yahi bata raha tha ki manush ke liye samanya jeevan mein jana hua jo sabse zyada कठोर पत्थर है वो पत्थर है ग्रेनाइट उसको भी हथौड़ा तोड़ देता है तो प्रभु का वचन अग्नि के समान शक्तिशाली है हथौड़े के समान शक्तिशाली है अनदर कंपैरिजन इज विथ अ लैंप एंड दिस इज अ वर्स दैट आई एम श्योर ऑल ऑफ यू हैव मेमोराइज्ड if not you must memorize and you must make your children to memorize it and that is sam 119 verse 105 sam 119 verse 105 thy word is a lamp unto my feet
भजन एक सौ उन्नीस का एक सौ पांच आपका वचन मेरे पैरों के लिए दीपक है इट इज टॉकिंग अबाउट ए क्रिस्टियन वॉक टूडे वी लिव इन अ वर्ल्ड दैट इज डोमिनेटेड विद इलेक्ट्रिक लाइट्स एंड प्रोडक्शन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रिसिटी हैज बिकम सो कॉमन and tax money has become so abundant that in cities you can go to almost any corner and you would have light but please remember this was not the situation a few years ago a few years ago when you went even for church meeting you had to take a lantern with you torches were not common and i still remember attending a lot of church meetings here in this state of kerala where after a church meeting everybody would lit their lantern and in the light of the lantern you would walk a lantern is not like a torch which throws the light to a distance it throws light for your feet that is what the scripture is saying your word is a lamp unto my feet it is a comparison with that village culture where everybody takes a, la- a lamp and walks on the feet uh, walks on feet in this world it is the scripture which shows us which gives us light for every step tera vachan mere pair ke liye deepak kisi zamane mein jab bijli itni prachur nahi thi tab even church meeting ke baad jo log shahar mein hain unhone shayad iska anubhav nahi kiya hoga lekin maine iska anubhav apne bachpan mein kiya hai इवन चर्च मीटिंग के बाद सब लोग अपना अपना अपनी अपनी लाल टेन जलाकर आठ आठ दस दस किलोमीटर अंधेरे में पैदल घर जाते थे तेरा वचन मेरे पैर के लिए दीपक उस घटना की ओर इशारा करता है देन अनदर कंपैरिजन फर्स्ट पीटर टू वर्स टू फर्स्ट पीटर टू टू and this is an important comparison like newborn infants desire for the pure spiritual milk that by it you may grow grow up into salvation navajat shishuon ke saman us shuddh doodh ki kamna karo जिसके द्वारा तुम उद्धार में आगे बढ़ सको वेन ए पर्सन एक्सेप्ट लॉर्ड जीसस एस हिज सेवियर ही इज एन इन्फेंट इन क्राइस्ट ही मे बी ट्वेंटी फोर्टी सिक्सटी और एटी इन हिज ह्यूमन एज बट इन हिज स्पिरिचुअल लाइफ ही इज एन इन्फेंट एंड दैट इन्फेंट नीड्स मिल्क Bible is that milk. पहला पत्र दो दो नए शिशुओं के समान दूध की कामना करो जब कहता है तब हम इस बात को याद रखें कि प्रभु यीशु को एक व्यक्ति जब ग्रहण करता है उस समय 20, 40, 60 या 80 साल का होगा मानसिक तौर पर आत्मिक जीवन में वो सिर्फ एक शिशु है और उसको प्रभु के वचन के दूध की जरूरत है जो पिलाना जरूरी है here i want to pause for a minute and uh, talk to you about a very very serious matter which is destroying the brethren assemblies we know that for brethren assemblies kerala produces the biggest missionary enterprise today there are about 3000 brethren evangelists all over india they live by faith 
of these 3,000 evangelists, only about 20% are people of Kerala. The remaining are people of Tamil Nadu, Andhra Pradesh, Orissa, Bihar, Madhya Pradesh. But 95% of their support comes from the state of Kerala. This small state provides for 95% of the funding. That is highly commendable. But in the last about 70 to 80 years of Kerala missionary enterprise, Hundreds of Keralites went to North India and they established hundreds of assemblies. They brought thousands of people to the Lord, baptized them, but they made one historical mistake. And the historical mistake is they did not teach the word of God systematically. I was brought up in North India. I have visited North Indian assemblies widely and therefore I am giving you information first hand. The Brethren Enterprise in India started with the help of or because of the initiative of Keralites. But these Keralites who went and established hundreds of assemblies in North India, they were very lax in teaching the word of God, the full counsel of the word of God to North Indians. As a result, when the second generation came in North India, made up of North Indians, a very big vacuum was created. A large number of North Indian evangelists do not know the ABCD of the word of God. They do not know bibliology. What, what does the Bible teach about the Bible? What does the Bible teach about Christ and his sacrifice? What does the Bible teach about sin? Human creation, human fall, human, um, human depravity. They don't know. They know that Lord Jesus will come someday. Other than that, they do not know anything in detail about rapture, post-rapture judgment of believers, millennium, and post-millennium post final judgment, and then entry into eternity. Who is responsible for it? The Keralite evangelists who went to North India, who were so preoccupied with bringing people to Christ, but who did not give doctrine, who did not teach the fundamental truths to North Indian believers are responsible for this state of chaos. I know, as I said, because I was brought up in North India, I also know because a large number of North Indian evangelists are in communication with me. And I often feel so disappointed that these brothers, they claim to be evangelists, but they don't know even a fundamental doctrine like justification by faith. Do you know why? We failed we failed in teaching them the fundamentals of the scripture. There are also representatives from Rajasthan in this group. I'm very happy, very, very happy that there is a wide representation. But I regret that those people who had to teach the fundamentals of the word of God failed in teaching. And when the second generation came, the second generation is almost blank about the scripture. They have not heard about dispensation. 
and without this without knowing about dispensation you cannot understand the old testament the new testament the rapture the judgment seat of christ tribulation millennium final judgment and eternity brothers and sisters those of us who are in teaching we need to understand that when a person comes to christ he may be 20 he may be 40 he may be 60 he may be 80 but the word of god very clearly says that he is only an infant and we have to feed him milk and after some time we have to feed him solid more solid food and this way we have to keep on feeding him till he is able to take the solid food of the word of god so the word milk for the word of god reminds us of this historical fact that somewhere there was some very serious mistake and as i teach bibliology i want to remind you my dear brothers and sisters it is still not too late it is still not too late many of you who have a wider involvement please make it a point to teach the whole counsel of the word of god starting from milk going up to solid food mai yahan par ye baat bata raha tha ki aaj prabhu ke vachan ke mamle mein बहुत अधिक अज्ञान है खासकर उत्तर भारत में पुराने नियम की व्यवस्था नए नियम का युग परमेश्वर के द्वारा मनुष्यों के बीच में अलग अलग युगों में जो किया गया प्रभु यीशु का आसमान में आगमन और मंडली का उठा लिया जाना वहां पर मंडली का न्याय और पृथ्वी पर महोपद्रव का समय उसके बाद प्रभु यीशु का द्वितीय आगमन पृथ्वी पर उसके बाद प्रभु यीशु का एक हजार वर्ष का राज्य उसके बाद जो अंतिम न्याय है उसके बाद शाश्वत काल में प्रवेश है इन सब के डिटेल्स उसके अलावा विश्वास के द्वारा धर्मी ठहराया जाना परमेश्वर के वचन के बारे में परमेश्वर का वचन क्या सिखाता है मनुष्य के पतन और उसके कारण जो कुछ हुआ प्रभु यीशु का देहधारी होना प्रभु यीशु का एक कुआरी के द्वारा जन्म लेना ये सब इतने फंडामेंटल डॉक्ट्रीन्स हैं कि इन चीजों को जब तक मंडली में सिखाया नहीं जाएगा तब तक विश्वासी लोग अपने जीवन में बच्चे रहेंगे इन चीजों की टीचिंग पर्याप्त मात्रा में नहीं दी जा रही है इसका मुझे बेहद अफसोस है और आज जिन लोगों की जिम्मेदारी जो लोग सुन रहे हैं उनमें जिन लोगों की जिम्मेदारी है प्रभु का वचन सिखाने की उन सबको मैं याद दिलाना चाहता हूं मेरे प्रिय भाई मेरी प्रिय बहन अपनी जिम्मेदारी से भागे नहीं क्योंकि हम जो करते हैं और जो नहीं करते हैं सबके लिए हिसाब देना पड़ेगा आई टुक फाइव मिनिट्स टू डाइवर्ट फ्रॉम बिब्लियोलॉजी टू द सब्जेक्ट ऑफ टीचिंग द होल काउंसिल ऑफ द वर्ड ऑफ गॉड बिकॉज इन दैट वी हैव मेड अ वेरी सीरियस एयर एंड टूडे वी आर रीपिंग द रिजल्ट those of you who have the gift of teaching please remember please remember don't be careless teach the whole counsel of the word of god may god bless you dear friends i am confident that you enjoyed listening to this question answer video by dr johnson c philip he would love to get your questions please post your questions in the comment box below this video and he will prepare a video reply for you Please post only one question at a time and make it as detailed as possible so that Dr. Philip has no problem in understanding exactly what you mean. Also, please encourage this ministry by subscribing to this channel. Below this video, there is a subscribe button.
Please click it. Also please click the bell icon near it to complete the process of subscribing. Thank you very much for being such an encouragement to our channel.